Namaste. Welcome. My being suits your being. Today, I wanted to talk about the 14th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. This is, most pe people here in the West do not understand or haven't been told that the Bhagavad Gita talks about 18 ways that you can know God. I've been talking in a previous video about the field and actually the 13th chapter talks about the knower of the field. And the 14th chapter talks about how the field changes, the three gunas. The three gunas are Rajas, Thomas, and the best of all, Sattva. Sattva is a state where you're happy and you know things. You see a lot of Buddhists going around and saying, geez, I'm very happy because I've studied Buddhism and I'm enacting it. I'm happy. I'm doing something that I get to know something and it's not hurting people. And so that's the state of sattva. But the state of sattva also, if you're in it, is a type of attachment. There comes a time when sattva leaves. Because the three gunas always are changing. And the idea behind the 14th chapter is, okay, it's happening, but I'm not attached to it. I'm not connected to that change. Because if I'm connected to it, a particular phase of change, that will change at some time. Because the three gunas operate. Even if you're a sattvic person, there comes a time when you have to sleep. And even though you may be a sattvic person, there's this type of uh, sloth or indolence in sattva, that's when you sleep. So the, the changes always come. And to know that they come and to be above them or not attached to them means that finally, at some point, you see the operator of the gunas, the one that's united with that. So you see beyond the changes or the illusion called Maya. The gunas operate and they produce their fruits. A man of sattva will have knowledge and happiness. A man, a man that's in rajas will have activity and things like greed and stuff like that. A man of Thomas doesn't want to do anything. There's also images that represent the three states. Sattva is bright and glowing. Thomas is dark and black and Rajas is red and activity. There's types of food. The when you see people that want to be vegetarians because they're studying meditation, the purpose for that is to 
make the mind calm and in sattva. So there are, th there are foods that disturb the mind. And you want to stay away from those. And there's, there's food that makes you uh, slothful and indolent. Food that's stayed out, that's been cooked and laid around too long and not put in the refrigerator. Okay, food that's rotten. Uh, beef will make you tamasic rather than rajasic. So they made some studies on this, and this is, the food is one, just one part of that whole thing. So having a sattvic mind is a key to going beyond the gunas. You want to go beyond them because then you want to become the observer. You want to be fit to become Brahman. There's a little bit more to this, and people some you know will spend many years studying just this aspect because by becoming above the gunas, you become fit to become Brahman. Krishna says at the beginning of the 14th chapter that if you become, become above the, the gunas you are not disturbed even when the universe collapses or is created. So that means that you still stay aware. That's how powerful this discourse on the realization through knowing the gunas will take you to summarize. Knowing what, how the gunas operate makes you fit to become Brahman, to become one with God that creates the gunas. Thank you.